Hello, and welcome to this week's episode entitled, Why Aren't Clocks Decimal? If you enjoy this episode, please like it and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and share it with your friends. OK, let's go. When I was at secondary school, the British government decimalised the currency. This was the start of an incredibly expensive reform of all Britain's currency, weights and measurements, and it took nearly 20 years to complete and made a huge difference to everybody's life. It was done as part of Britain's membership, first of the European Economic Community and later the European Union. The cost was massive. In fact, it's really difficult to find out how much it really cost. The currency, like most currencies, now has 100 pennies to the pound, but the old system had 12 pennies to a shilling and 20 shillings to a pound, with a total of 240 pennies to the pound. The other measurement systems, like weights, liquids, volumes, etc., also had non-decimal systems. I, like most people, could see the logic and advantage of the decimal system, and this is something I always accepted until very recently. It was only a short time ago that I asked myself a question. If decimalization is so logical and practical and used by practically every nation in the world, at least for money, why don't we use it for clocks? Why is it that clocks use base 12 or base 60 and not a base 10? Why are there 24 hours in a day and not 10 or 100? Why are there 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour? Why not 100? Why are there 12 points on the clock face? I started to look into this and I discovered that the decimal system is not that logical or practical. It's simple indeed, but not much else. Let me be clear, I'm not one of these nostalgic reactionaries who would like to go back to the old system I grew up with. I remember as a child in primary school learning that there were 16 ounces to a pound and 14 pounds to a stone, etc., or there were 12 inches to a foot and 3 feet to a yard, and so on. But I do think that we've changed one flawed system for another. It's clear where the decimal system comes from. We all have 10 fingers and thumbs, and so it's easy to count that way. But where does our system of measuring time come from? Well, in fact, it comes from the Babylonian civilization almost 4,000 years ago. The most commonly accepted theory is this. Babylonia was an empire that had its origins in Mesopotamia, what is now southern Iraq, and it came after the Sumerians. The Babylonians used a base 12 system instead of 10 like we do, but they absorbed aspects of the Sumerian culture, which used a base 5. When the systems are merged, you get a base 60. In other words, 5 times 12. The base is easy to use because, as I can demonstrate here, you can see that I'm counting the knuckles on my four fingers. Each finger has three knuckles, so four fingers makes 12 knuckles. I'm using the thumb of the same hand to count the knuckles, and when I've reached 12, I can put that block of 12 on the other hand and go back and repeat. This can be done five times, which gives us 60. So I can count up to 60 with this system instead of just 10 with two hands. So what is the advantage of using a base 60 or 12 instead of a base 10 or 100? Well, if you've ever tried to divide a restaurant bill three ways, you can see one example. Dividing 100 pounds, euros or dollars, whatever, between three people isn't easy because a third of 100 is this figure. 33.33 recurring. This example shows that 10 isn't a very flexible number when it comes to division, and not just in restaurants. The thing is that a base 12 is highly composite, which means that it can be divided by a lot of other numbers. If we take the number 10, you can see here that it can be divided by itself, 1, 2 and 5, and that's it. Base 12, instead, you can see, has more options. You can divide it into halves, quarters, and thirds. If we look at a base 100, and let's face it, all our currencies are multiples of 100, here you can see which numbers you can divide 100 into, whereas 60 has more numbers. So, in fact, you can divide 60 by more numbers and make life easier. And, in fact, the old money that we used to be used in Britain had 12 pennies to the shilling, but obviously with inflation, the shilling became worth much less. But it had 240 pennies to the pound. And again, 
240 is a highly composite number and can be divided by many other numbers. This makes calculations easier. So maybe the question is wrong. Maybe we shouldn't ask why aren't there 100 minutes in an hour and so on, but why don't we have 60 pennies to the pound or 120 or the equivalent of 60 centimetres to the metre? It's much more logical and flexible. The point is, things are the way they are because they are the way they are, and nothing's going to change at this point. It would be too difficult and expensive to change anything now. But it also seems to me that when governments or international organisations do try to improve things, they often don't do a very good job of it. Bye for now.